Hello there, Reese here from Waypoint, and in this video I'm going to go through how to apply landed costs onto purchase orders within Deer. The first thing I want to clear up is what is a landed cost? Well, it's a kind of a catch all phrase, and it applies to pretty much any third party expense or cost you've accrued with gaining um, products from a supplier um, into your inventory. So this could be duty charges you've been, um, you've accrued with importing goods, it could be third party shipping services you've used to collect those goods from the um, supplier itself. Essentially, um, doing landed costs enables you to take those third-party expenses and have them be absorbed into the true cost of the products you've received on that purchase order. So here I've got an example purchase order I've created. It's essentially, it's just a order for some six packs of alcohol. It's been ordered, it's been invoiced, the goods have been received, and I'm going to use manual journals as one of the techniques to apply a landed cost here. So in manual journals, what I'll be able to do is add this here. You want to make sure that this is debiting the same uh, inventory account you use for your products. And you'll essentially credit it from the relevant expense account, which best matches the type of expense you've accrued. So in this instance, um, I'm just gonna use something simple like a freight and courier, and let's pretend that that was a duty charge. So I put this here, and I might um, use a particular reference code here. And related to that specific duty charge. The date effectiveness will be defaulted to today, but you can also backdate um, these dates. And then I'll put, let's say I was charged $45. Um, now be aware that that value is in your local currency, and it is also X tax. So as soon as I hit authorize, now what's going to occur is that $45 I've accrued from third party duty charges is going to be distributed across these products and it's going to distribute it based on the value. So higher value items will take a larger share of that $45 than the other items. Now you can add multiple, um, multiple uh, manual journals and you can actually do this after the fact. So let's say you receive the goods, you get your invoice from the supplier, everything's all fine, and then only later do you actually get an invoice for some duty charges you want to actually um, have applied to these products. You can still come in here via manual journals and do that after the fact. Fantastic. The next process I'm gonna show you is a little bit more um, complex, but it does actually have some advantages. It enables you to um, replicate your invoice you've, been rece you've received for that third party charge inside Deer, which will then send that up to zero, which is great. And it'll also enable you to do things such as applying that, um, that landed cost across multiple purchase orders. And how you achieve this is either by creating a service purchase or a simple purchase. Let's create a new one now. And you'll replicate the um, third party charge you want to actually apply to these. So I'm just going to do a scenario here. Let's, um, I think I have a shipping scenario here with TNT. Let's say I paid uh, a TNT to collect those six packs from uh, the supplier's warehouse as they were not shipping them um, themselves. I will replicate essentially that order here. Now, one thing to note is I'm not going to be dealing with any products. I'm going to be dealing with service items. And we do want to make sure blind receipt is enabled, as that will mean we can skip straight to the invoicing stage. We're not ordering or requesting this. We've already got our invoice in our hands. So I'll replicate here the charge I've got from TNT, putting in the same uh, invoice data I see there. And rather than add products, I will be adding service items. Now, one of the things to be um, to note here is you can pre-create these so that they're correctly mapped. So you can have these all ready to go. And you need to ensure that the account that this service item is associated to is against a um, expense account. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate if I didn't have this against an expense account, let's say a revenue account here. If I tried to put this duty charge of, let's say, um, $100, if I try to um, uh, work with anything but an expense account, I'll show you what occurs and I'll show you how to fix this. So I'm just gonna authorize this invoice and a few things occur. Because there's no products on this um, purchase order, it knows that there are no goods to receive and that step is now actually removed. Now, 
unfortunately, what I did want to occur is a button to appear here that says expenses. Due to the fact that this is against a revenue account, not an expense account, that button hasn't appeared. So this is one thing that um, trips a lot of people up. So if I put this against an expense account, and let's use the same freight and courier simple one I had before. I'm gonna change that there and save to update this invoice. We now see that the expense icon has appeared. Selecting this will enable me to take all of the expense account values on this invoice and apply it and distribute it across um, different areas of DIR. So I first select the uh, expense account and the value in question. And then I'll use the allocation option here to either select a purchase order or an assembly or stock transfer. Now this is for doing more things like um, third party manufacturing and other processes where you'd want to actually be doing this here. Or if you have a shipping charge you want to actually apply to a internal stock transfer, you can use this. But I'm just going to show you um, via a purchase order for this demonstration as um, the same process applies um, but just for different results. So I'm going to select purchase order here and I'll get this option to search the purchase order. Now I can search either the um, purchase order's invoice number or the PO number, both of them will be here, but I do believe um, if memory serves, there's my um, purchase order we're playing with before. And I'll add this here. Now one thing to note is I can go up here to allocation and continue adding purchase orders in the same way. And just for demonstration purposes, what I will do is I'll grab another um, purchase order at random. And now what I could do is I could manually um, calculate how much of this $100 I want to apply to either one of these purchase orders. And I do not need to actually use the entire $100. That could actually be done at a later stage. Let's say there's another PO that you'll know you'll be needing to apply an amount of this to in the future. You could apply it to the ones that are relevant now and then apply the remainder uh, when it is applicable in the future. The only thing you'll need to make sure of is that the PO you're trying to apply this um, expense to, this landed cost, has an authorized invoice. If it has no invoice, you won't be able to apply it because it doesn't have the financial information to impact at that point. Great, so I could manually type this in, but if I wanted to simply distribute based on the value of these, I can hit auto allocate, and it will spread that charge of $100 cleanly across both of these based on the value weight of both purchase orders. Fantastic, so if I hit save now, what will occur is my landed costs or my expense accrued to the freight and courier here will actually be distributed to those two um, purchase order invoices and as you see here I've got links directly to them and opening up these will show that the system has gone and automatically created those manual journals we see here that's the one I just applied for $77.22 so that's a great way of applying to multiple it's a great way of actually having a paper trail that's far more accurate as the invoice we've created back here 14T will go up to um, your accounting platform of choice on your next sync and you'll be able to actually make payments against that invoice. So fantastic process uh, for, for people with more complex landed costs. That's all we have um, for, for that demonstration today but if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us here at Waypoint. We're more than happy to help.